things are hotting up. Lots and lots of things happening in future. So get your friends to sign up. This is um, what what we call this, the little weekly rant, really. It, I don't think it's a really a rant. It's just looking at the, the news, what's going on, and have me reporting on it. The first bit on YouTube, I don't know, six or seven minutes, whenever I feel that that's enough, that you'll get bored and go and click on some some ice skaters farting. Isn't that fantastic? Have you seen them? But anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, and then the rest on JDTV. A lot's been happening this week. I think the thing that's in, the, in my mind, most of all, is what's happened to the summer. Now we've got the lockdown about to be over on, on Saturday. We're all going to flock to the pub. No, we're not, because there's 400 mile an hour gales coming. It's going to piss with rain and it's going to be all horrible. Well, let's just hope that uh, we all behave sensibly. This virus has not gone away. It, uh, it can bounce off people. So let's just be careful. Imagine everybody's got it and imagine you've got it and you don't want to give it to everybody else. That, that seems fine. And I think we're all getting in danger of now saying the government are telling us to do this, the government are telling us to do this and do that. We're not getting enough information. It's very simple. There's a fucking virus out there. Do not, you know, get it. It's, you know, try and keep away from people. Look what's happening in, um, in Leicestershire at the moment, in Leicester. There's a, a lockdown being reimposed in Leicester and my, and my heart goes out. Here it goes again. None of us have got hearts. They're all out. If you walk around, there's hearts flying all over the frigging place. Leicester. Has anyone mentioned why Leicester, perhaps? Let's have a look at the, uh, the there's a lot of Bames live in Leicester. I've been from Leicester. I think one of my wives come from near there. I forget her name now, it doesn't matter. But, but Leicester is full of Asian people. There's lots of Asian people, probably 50% of some of Leicester, the city centre, is uh, Asian minor Bame uh, people. And, and when you think that they've uh, got more of a chance of catching uh, this terrible virus, you think they would be a little bit more careful. I, I don't go to Leicester anymore because I'm banned. They've got a bit of a lefty council. And the De Montfort Hall, which was a shithole anyway, I got myself banned from there for just by being me, really, and voting Conservative. It's a great big barn of a place. I think it's in Nelson Mandela Park. Whether they've renamed that now, I've no idea. Uh, but they're very wokey up there. So, so what the government are doing is looking at Leicester and they're actually practising BLM, Brown Lives Matter. OK, so the Asian community up there has got to be protected. But but I got I got an email the other day, a guy called Lee, right? His auntie in Leicester was going in to get fuel. And, she, you know, one of them aunties, like a school teacher, Morris Thousand, probably. She's gone in the garage to get fuel. And the Asian man there, the baby bam, man, said, um, yes, she had pumped number five. And she said, can I pay by cash or card? He said, you can pay with whatever you want. The virus has gone. So that's what you're dealing with there. There was another guy, I've got his name here, so I don't fuck up. His name is Azim Ali. And he has a factory in Leicester. And according to the Daily Mail, which means it must be true, he said today they are going to remain open, allegedly. He said, because it's the mail, they are going to remain open no matter what the authorities say. And his reasoning for this, the cramming everybody in making this cloth and textiles, whatever they're doing, is that uh, he was losing money and he's going to go skin otherwise. OK, so let's just have a look what the mayor said. The mayor, the mayor looks like he, um, he plays the drums in the local pub, doesn't he? he he's a down-to-earth, sort-of-the-earth chap. Yeah, not for him, you know, hairdressers. Well, you can't go anyway, really. So he said perhaps the problem is, is that the people from uh, Leicester um, who are not getting the message don't speak English. Well, is that a problem all over the country where certain BAME communities all live together and can't speak? I, I hardly uh, speak English, but, but here's the thing. If they didn't get the message, why does the BBC bring back Corbyn or bring back communism or whatever you want? Why does the hopefully soon-to-be fucking funded uh, BBC uh, pay thousands on an Asian network channel? Why, why do they do that? OK, not only does it help people stay isolated, but now they don't like it. Listen to it anyway, probably because it's shit. They've got the equivalent of Jeremy Vine on there, this fucking condescending lefty bastard, but this bloke speaks Punjabi. And when you think about it, right, if you look at the news, especially the news from Fan Dabby Dozy up in Scotland and uh, the George Sava lookalike in Wales, the heads of the devolved governments, doing a great job. Um, Fan Dabby Dozy, she has one side of the screen and a person doing sign language, the other side of the screen. Fantastic. <laughs> Different faces. Uh, uh, and it's the same in Wales. Now, I've had a look at some statistics here. Now, how many deaf people in this country do you think can understand sign language? Right? 
145,000. Okay, how many aliens do we have in this country? Not counting the ones that's floated up yesterday or today being chased by Nigel Farage, who's then being chased by the Metropolitan Police. Very difficult to swim with when you're on one knee. But anyway, we have six million Asians in this country who enlighten our life. Come on, they do. I agree, I agree that it takes all different types of ingredients to make a fantastic cake. But they're being shortchanged. So for 145,000 poor deaf people, right, half the screen, right, there's Fan Dabby Dozy, there's half the screen of the funny person doing this, right, why don't the BBC start to put up subtitles? Why don't they have Punjabi and Urdu in subtitles for the six million Asian people here who apparently are not getting the message? Well, if BBC, if you want to be friggin' lefty, do it. In fact, why not do the news in Punjabi and, uh, and in, uh, or in Urdu or some other Bengali and have the funny sign language transfer it to English so we have to go and find a deaf person to tell us, you know, what the fuck is going on. But seriously, I'm being serious. Put up some subtitles if, if this is the fortune. OK, now then, brown lives matter. We know this. Black lives matter. We know this. Has anyone mentioned the Chinese? Hmm? What's going on there then? Apart from that woman from Hong Kong who looks like Benny Hill, right? What's, I don't know what's happening. So it looks as if uh, we've got the ump with Beijing now uh, because they've done something with Hong Kong which we shouldn't have given away in the first place. Thank you, Chris Patton. Uh, but now if we have three million Chinese people from Hong Kong come here, that's it. The television's going to be full of fucking subtitles. We ain't going to see who it is, which is good because it will block out that Laura Koonsberg and that awful fat bloke from Sky. OK. What's the other thing now uh, BLM have been doing? Right. The BLM, I've got it here, so they, they, they want to defund the police. <laughs> I never thought I'd be agreeing with them. But what a great idea to have no police. Wouldn't that be fantastic? You could drive home pissed, couldn't you, eh? Yeah, take, it doesn't matter if you, you... Listen, why don't we... Look, everyone drive home pissed. You're not allowed to drive unless you're pissed because drunks have a way of bouncing off one another. Oh, fuck, I've totaled your car. This is not my car. This is ridiculous, right? And on LBC uh, the other day, I was listening to Nick Ferrari, who is the sensible voice of LBC. Now they've got rid of Farage, the lefty bastards. He is as brilliant as that O'Brien is, that lefty, awful, self-centred, miserable face like a robber's dog, lefty broadcaster. This is what... Um, this is what this person said. Apparently, this was a BLM lawyer who wants to defund the police, not have a police force. And capitalism. Capitalism's got to go out the way. What is capitalism? It's working and earning money, isn't it? You want to bring in communism where I work and give all my money to some other, someone else. So this is what they want to do, defund the police. So, so old Nick Ferrari said, so who will do the policing? Oh, this uh, uh, BLM lawyer... Imagine what she looked like or sounded like, very lefty. Why do, why do Black Lives Matter have to be so lefty? I can understand you being fed up of what you think is not having proper equality, but you don't have to be a lefty to get that. No one's got equality. We're all fucked in this country, all of us. There's no privilege. Anyway, get back to the thing. She said, let's get rid of the police. Well, who will do the policing? We'll have social workers to stop crime before it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so he said, what about 60,000 Tottenham fans meet... 60,000 uh, Arsenal fans. Who's going to police that? Oh, she said, quick as a flash, this lawyer. Well, the social workers would have already got people not to want to fight and do this stuff. Absolutely ridiculous. Who's going to stop the terrorists? Well, there wouldn't be any terrorists because of the way the social workers would integrate people into the society. So instead of having a border force, we'll have social workers. So when people paddle ashore, instead of Diane Abbott and their other lefties there, we'll have social workers now from BLM. And they want to bring down uh, capitalism now. And this is the other thing. There's a disproportionate number of black people in prison. Well... OK, I don't know the stats. I know the stats about how many veterans there are in prison. We have about 4% of the prison population. They say 88,000 people in prison. We have about 4,000 veterans in prison. And I'm here to tell you, 96% of them are white guys. They are white veterans. I know, I know lots of black people in prison, and these are in prison because they are criminals. They're the first ones to admit that they're criminals. So, so if we're saying there's too many black people in prison, so what do the policemen do then? If a black person's breaking the law, oh, you've had it right off, son. Actually, the prisons are full of black people at the moment, so we've got enough, so on your way, sonny. No, no, 
it doesn't work like that. If you break the law and the judge feels that you should go to prison, you will go to prison no matter what colour you are. In fact, I think the whole prison system needs a shake-up, but that's just me. I've been working with the prison system for five years now, and prison are full of good men of all colours that have done bad things. There must be uh, another way. So, as we move through, let's just have a look what's happened with football now. There's a bit of a a step back from the Black Lives Matter situation. I see today a couple of people, so Matt, Jamie, right, have now stopped wearing their Black Lives Matter because of these political statements by this mad lawyer person who, who wants, who's now making a political thing, a political thing, a, a civil war type thing of Black Lives Matter. Who does she think she speaks for, this stupid person? Okay, uh, uh, African Americans are now being, well, in fact, why are black people in America called African Americans? My black mates here, I don't have many black mates because I, I don't have many mates. Uh, they're just mates to me. But if I was to call, let's say, old Dawkins, right, who lives out in Spain, used to play for Torquay, a fantastic bloke, fantastic. Bloke. Remember that goal he scored? Brilliant. Anyway, he only scored one. If I was to call him an African Englishman, he'd knock me spark out, and rightly so. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So. This is, has gone a bit too far now, hasn't it? So what are we going to do? The footballers are now saying, OK, look, we, ha we do believe Black Lives Matter, but we're not going to politicise this. Um, capitalism, now that's got to be scrapped as well. Imagine footballers, what are they going to do with all their money? There was a guy here, right, what's his name? I've got his name here somewhere. Uh, Carl Henry, Carl Henry. And, he, and this is a quote. It says, capitalism doesn't favour white people, that's for sure, and it is not the enemy of the black people. Well, well done you for, for standing out. Let's have respect for one another, but let's not get carried away with the moment, OK? All lives matter. There's a Green Party councillor, you know, the lefty, tree-hugging, vegan, eating, save the world, Jeremy Corbyn supporting fucking, oh, vegetarians, right? Just been charged with writing racist things. Racist, she put. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. Oliver was white. Fucking shit, what? That's not right. Okay. Now, St Albans Cathedral are putting up a mural or a something depicting the Last Supper with Jesus as a black Afro-Caribbean man. Huh? What's going on? What happened? I mean, Jesus at the Last Supper is now going to... Well, I suppose why not? Jesus could be anything to anybody. If I was a black person, why is Jesus white? Why are the angels all white? Why are all the disciples white? Well, it's probably because that's what they were. You can't write history to just, you know, support your political narrative. It's crazy. All lives matter. Everyone's, especially mine. OK, so goodbye, you YouTubers. And for those of you on uh, JDTV, I've got a story for you. www.jimdavidson.uk I don't care, do I?